For the last couple of years, data enrichment as I know it has been one of the most painful parts of building a directory. And I'm not alone. In a recent post in my free Ship Your Directory community, I saw a post where people mentioned data enrichment being the hardest part of building a directory. So I wanted to show you how easy it is for a complete non-coder like me to go into Claude Code and create a web scraping agent, something that searches the web for you, and in my case today, create really high quality descriptions for my directory. Now what's funny is that I found this method because I am currently building a new WordPress directory and I came across a challenge that would require me to go and manually search up a bunch of information and consolidate it in a description that's basically like a story. And I didn't know how to do that without spending a lot of time or money on third-party tools. So I will be showing you how to get set up in Claude Code, but it's really simple and the harder part is where I spend most of my time sharing my lessons and tips, where I basically spent over 10 hours working with this agent in Claude Code and I ran into some challenges. So later in this video, I'll be sharing some pro tips and some things that you should know if you're going to create hundreds of these high quality listing descriptions for yourself. But first, let me give you some context on what I'm working on and why this description is so important from a data enrichment perspective in the niche that I'm building in. So right now I'm making a video where I'm building a directory the same way that I did back in 2022. It's in WordPress, it's very manually done, and the niche is going to be in haunted hotels, which is, I know, kind of interesting, but the keyword research looks great, and there are a few different competitors that are doing pretty well, over 10,000 monthly visitors, and this is one of them here. And I was researching my competitors, just scrolling through the pages that were already ranking at the top of my keyword, haunted hotels, and I realized that the data enrichment for for this particular niche is heavy on the storytelling. Every single haunted hotel has a story where some crazy event happened and that's what led it to being this paranormal ghost filled location that people know it as. The story is so important that you don't even see your typical directory information like your address. There's no map embed, there's no working hours, there's none of that stuff because it's kind of a different type of directory niche. I could stick with the basics. This is all the stuff that we're used to including in our directories, right? Name, phone, site, address, but nothing matters more if you don't have the story. If I ever want a fighting chance to overtake my competitors, I need to have a really solid story that is high quality, historically accurate, and that actually does a good job getting people excited to visit or stay at one of these haunted hotels. So how would you actually go and create a really high quality description like this? Well, I would have to look up every single one of these haunted hotels and put the story together. Or I can use ChatGPT and hope that it doesn't hallucinate, but both of those options suck if I'm going to be honest. And that's when I went to Claude code. But most importantly, I just wanted to show you how you need to go and identify what type of data enrichment you need according to your niche, because it's going to be different depending on the niche that you choose. For me, it's pretty straightforward, but I need to make sure that my story is super high quality. And this task in itself presents its own challenges, which I'll talk about later on in this video. With that said, let me go into how I created these incredibly high quality descriptions that I'm showing you right here for over 300 haunted hotels in my CSV. Now there's two parts of the workflow that I want to show you and why through the first part is just the very beginning setup, right? What do you need to get started and essentially get to the web searching agent that will do your descriptions for you? That's actually really, really easy. And the second part of the workflow is actually what I'm currently working on right here, which is my existing project. And I just wanted to show you what a realistic workflow looks like once you do get everything warmed up. Claude Code knows exactly what you wanted to do, what that looks like. As far as the setup, all I did was bring up my terminal, install a Next.js app, bring it into cursor, installed Claude code, and that's pretty much it. After that, I ran this prompt right here, which I'll go over in a second, but that is the entire setup. I kept it really, really simple. I don't have a local development server for this. I don't have a front end. I didn't connect it or integrate it with Supabase. I didn't do any of that normal stuff that I usually do when I build a directory through Cloud Code because I'm building this on WordPress. That's my CMS of choice for this project. So this is purely for the data enrichment part. Now, speaking of the first prompt that I gave Cloud Code, this is the one. So if you want to read this whole thing, you can pause it, but I just wanted to quickly go over the most important parts of this prompt. And the first thing is explicitly mentioning that this is a data enrichment task where you want to conduct a web search. And that is really important because in the past, 
I did not specify that I wanted it to be a web search and it would generate all these descriptions really quickly. And I was like, awesome, this is really cool. But when I did my due diligence and I looked up a couple of these haunted hotels, 99% of this is complete AI slob and it's completely inaccurate. And if I wanted the McDonald's of AI description generation, then I would just be okay with that. But that's not the point of this. So the web search part is really important. The next important part that I think really helped with my prompt is actually specifying what columns to use in your CSV when conducting the web search. So for me, I wanted Claude to use the name field, the address field, and the website field, and basically look that stuff up on Google for me. And that would essentially lead them down the right path, find the right haunted hotel, and then give me the description based on what it finds. And that's how I prevented any hallucinating that did happen with that very first time that I ran it with this example here. Lastly, I think a sentence like this is very, very useful and valuable. And what this says is basically every time you have a bad of descriptions that are completed, save it. Save it in the CSV because there are situations where that data might be lost because cursor just quits out on you or something happens. So it's really nice to save it so you don't have to recreate those descriptions and that's just more time down the toilet. Now I just wanted to quickly show you the workflow once you actually get into the thick of it and all I have to do is say, Let's proceed. So after I type that, it's basically starting to look at my CSV, understand which are the next rows that need to be worked on, which don't have descriptions, and it's going to go and conduct that web search. But what it's going to do is it's probably gonna do batches of one to five locations, and then it will tell me that it finished and you can see the old kind of success message here, but it says, perfect, we've done 45 hotels now. And next time it'll say, perfect, we did 48 hotels, so on and so forth. So once it's finished with the batch that it's currently working on, it will save in the CSV that you specified. In this case, I told it to save everything in version 4.2 and it will just continue to add these generated descriptions. If we just take a look at one of them, they are pretty solid and they all are super detailed and very accurate. So that's an inside look on the workflow. It's just going to continue updating this same CSV. So while this is running, I figured I would talk about some of the challenges that you will encounter if you're doing this for hundreds of different listings like I am. And the first challenge is that it's just not that fast. You can get set up in 30 minutes, but if you were to complete the entire task, with the completed descriptions, you might be able to do like 10 or 20 of them in 30 minutes, but the output is extremely high quality. It's still really low effort. Like all I do is kind of sit here and just say proceed or I accept commands that it tells me. It's still way less effort than if I were to do it manually and I can just have it on one of my screens and I can just work on something else. And occasionally every five minutes, I just say proceed or continue and that's pretty much all I need to do. The second challenge with this method is that you are going to run into situations where your data will be lost. And the most common one that I've encountered is cursor will just force quit on you. I don't know if it's overwhelmed. I don't know what happens, but it happens like every, I would say 100 or so descriptions that I generate. I will just like look up and realize cursor is no longer on my screen and I'll have to pull it back up and I'll have to retell it the task at hand because it has no memory of previous tasks that it did. Even when I had this .md file that I had pulled up right here, in my actual project folder. I could reference to it all I want, but it won't really do a good job understanding exactly what the task was. You would think that this is the fix, but it's not. And I basically have to re-prompt it and say, hey, this is a web search, yada, yada. We're trying to figure out these haunted hotels. I've had to do that a few times. So while there's not much I can do to prevent cursor from just force quitting on me. This is why it's so important to tell it to update the CSV that I'm working on every time it finishes a batch. And before I didn't do this. So sometimes I would run like 40 descriptions and it would take like an hour and then it would force quit on me. And all of that progress would be lost and I'd have to redo it all over again. So that's why I highly recommend it. Another pretty common cause for my data being messed up or lost is the actual CSV that I gave in my prompt. In my prompt, I'm giving it a CSV to basically use for the name, address, and website, right? That's how it conducts a search. What I learned is if you give a CSV that is really cluttered and not organized like this one, and it'll actually kind of confuse Claude code. And what I mean by that is that in this CSV that I uploaded at first, it has all of my data enrichment and it has these review columns with you know all these reviews here. Um, it has a lot of data. And what had happened is that when it was creating a description and putting it in my CSV, it thought that this column represented an already done description. So it would tell me, yeah, I already did the description and I would look at the CSV and there was literally no progress done or it would actually complete the CSV 
but it would be like in some random cell on the CSV. My point is keep your CSV really, really clean. Don't add columns where Claude code will mistaken it as an existing description. My fix around this was just literally removing all this like this, 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 this. Yeah, I think I removed everything except this. It just contains the necessary information to conduct the web search, right? The name, the site, the address. That's pretty much it. All of this stuff was just making it harder on myself and confusing the heck out of Claude code. So that was actually really annoying. And I lost maybe a couple hours learning that lesson. As long as you keep the CSVs that you give Claude code really organized and you follow this part of the prompt where you define the actual columns that it needs to use, I don't think you'll have to run into any of the major issues that I have run into. And you're probably less likely to encounter any duplicates as well, which was another problem that I had. So those are the main challenges that you can expect to encounter. And a couple ways that I've overcome it. By the way, we can see that it did complete some more hotels. 58 hotels are now finished. I can double check in my CSV that this is in fact being updated and we can scroll down and you know, usually I can tell just because there's more descriptions here and then I can check them from there, but yeah, it does look like it's doing it correctly. So that is great. That wraps it up and hopefully you learned a thing or two around how to create a simple web scraping agent through Claude Code. It's so incredible how this is the new normal now. And so if you do want to learn more AI coding things like this, let me know in the comments below. I love hearing what you guys are building what you guys wanna learn. Yeah, I read every comment as well. I will be posting a full build out video for my haunted hotels directory that I'm building in WordPress. But for now, I appreciate you watching, grateful for your support, and hopefully I catch you in another video. See ya.